Hello, my name is Hannah, and I'm about to give you a crash course on epigenetics. What even is epigenetics? The term wasn't first used until 1905, when Conrad H. Waddington married the two terms epigenesis, which deals with embryo development, and genetics, the study of heredity. Epigenetics is the study of how an organism's environment influences genetic traits without changing its DNA sequence. To better understand this, let's take a look at a growing epidemic in the United States. Today, in the U.S., one in every three children is clinically obese. Yes, the growing number of fast food restaurants and hours spent watching Netflix doesn't help solve the problem, but scientists have recently discovered there may be other factors at play. Recent studies done on mice show that the dietary habits of an organism's parent, especially in the first few days of pregnancy, are vital in determining the child's metabolic health. This shows that environmental factors can literally switch on and off genes at their pleasure. The suppressions of genes was crystal clear when experiments done at Duke University produced surprising results. This all started when two fat yellow mice fell in love. These fat yellow mice were specifically bred to be fat and yellow, so when they gave birth to skinny brown babies, the scientists were puzzled. In the experiment, two different mice couples were separated and their eating habits were changed. The control group was allowed to eat normally, and they gave birth to fat yellow mice. Shocker. But the mice in the experimental group, which were given vitamin supplements commonly prescribed to pregnant women in addition to their normal diet, produced skinny brown babies. How could this be? Well, as it turns out, the vitamins reached the embryos of her offspring and turned the gene for fat and yellow off. It was there, just not expressed. This type of genetic suppression is called DNA methylation. Pretty much what happens is a methyl group binds to a gene and suppresses it from expressing itself without changing the DNA. Scientists had no idea there was such a direct cause and effect pattern found in gene expression. So why does this happen? Surprisingly, it was all for our own benefit. Over 10,000 years ago, when famine was common, it helped organisms conserve energy. But today, it frequently causes obesity. When a mother today eats a lot of poor nutrient foods, such as fast food, signals are sent to the embryo to tell it to switch on the gene for slow metabolism, since it thinks it is being born into a world where nutrient-rich food is difficult to obtain. So, by slowing the metabolism, the offspring believes it will have a better chance for survival since it can retain what little nutrients and energy it has available. With the further investigation on fetal development, we can discover what triggers there are and how they affect the embryo. With this information, babies can be healthier or smarter simply by turning on genes that produce positive results and turning off genes with negative results. Even by just knowing there is a direct cause and effect between the mother's choices and their child, future mothers can change their habits to benefit their children and eventually the world.